Servus. Servus, servus. Uh, woher kommst du heute? Uh, ursprünglich aus Tirol, also Innsbruck und so. Okay. And I'm going to switch to English because at this point we've reached the levels of my sophisticated German ability to conversate. Um, how exactly did it happen? I mean, what, it, not very many people did drum with Björk. No, Björk saw my YouTube video, a piece called Mona Desire, and she apparently liked it and then she contacted me if I wanted to be part of a new album. And yeah, didn't turn down that offer, so we recorded the song called Virus in this last December in Iceland. And then for the live tour, she, she invited me for the live tour, and then I sort of offered her to also play the drums and stuff. So I ended up playing drums and, and marimba, like mini marimba, and the hung. So it sort of became quite a big role in the project. Right. And did, how did she contact you? Did she did she call you on the phone? Did she contact you through some agency? Uh, first, I got an email from her assistant, just seeing if I'm interested, and then. The next thing was a Skype call that I had with her, so she sort of made a Skype appointment basically and then we had like a half an hour call, which was cool. So. How, how was that? Was that kind of surreal? A, a bit weird? Like, oh, I'm on Skype with Bjork. Yeah, it was sort of a little bit surreal and uh, I remember that my Skype, you know, we said like one o'clock on that day and I had to make sure it's the right time zone because I was in London, she was in, I don't know where she was, probably in Iceland. And so I, and then I went on Skype, and then just like a minute before my Skype crashed for some reason. So it was a bit stressful, and then I had to sort of restart the computer, and I was a bit late. And then I, at the same time, got a call from the assistant where I am on Skype and so on. But uh, it was all fine. It was yeah, great talking to her. She's a great lady, and um, yeah. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about this? Um about this YouTube video. It got four million hits or something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was quite an unexpected th unexpected thing. I mean, I, I uploaded that video on YouTube in 2007. I recorded it in a, in a basement in Innsbruck. And sort of, I wanted to, do, to promote my album at the time, and, and that worked well, but unexpectedly a Japanese guy downloaded the video and re-uploaded it on his account and a slightly different name called Hangrom Solo. And I had no control of that video, and I was a little bit annoyed actually about it, because uh, you know it's, it was my video, he called it a different name, but luckily he put my website link underneath it. And suddenly this video got more and more hits, and, and turned out to become, you know, it was sort of in top 30 music videos on YouTube of all music videos, and it was, it's, it is now the most popular Hang video in the world, and it's just incredible what happened, and luckily many, People have seen it. Like many many promoters and many artists who ask me to collaborate with them. So it's just been an amazing, like the story of the video in a way. It's, it wasn't expected at all. Yeah, that's that's hilarious because you didn't you weren't like one of these YouTube people who are like, oh, I'm gonna you know tag it like this and I'm gonna do all these comments and I'm gonna find a way to make this popular. You just uploaded the video and then it became popular. Yeah, not <laughs> not at all. I mean, I didn't think about any. Manipulation and it was totally out of my control once the Japanese guy uploaded it anyway, so I, you know, I can't even edit the information of it, and it's just out of my control this video. But it is great, and so many people have also done remixes, you know, on, in the internet you find that everywhere, and it's been used for a TV advert, and it's just doing its own thing, and I can't really control it, but it, it's definitely helping me. I wanted to attract attention with it and promote my album, as I said, but, you know, I never expected, I mean, to, that, that, that that could happen, and neither was YouTube that popular at the time, YouTube was just out for, for two years, and uh, so, you know, it's all day changed, you know, the, the, the importance of YouTube nowadays is just different than at the time, but it's also the amount of videos, at the time there were just less videos on YouTube, so, I think it was easier to get more hits nowadays, there's so many, you know, everyone, you know, you go out in the evening, put your phone up and then it's on YouTube suddenly. So now it's millions of hits and uh, millions of videos and not many hits. All right. So that was sort of lucky that that happened at the right time. Now you're not just doing the project with Bjork, you're doing se several other uh, musical projects. Well, what, what would be the common thread between them and what's, what, what also what separates them? Um, 
Well, there's quite a big difference between the, the projects I'm doing, and I'm, I'm very much enjoying the, the variety of it. I, I just love playing different instruments and playing different styles of music. You know, I'm, I'm really sort of I like playing very loud and energetic music where people dance to, sing along, shout along, whatever. And I like playing very, very quiet, intense music where it's absolutely silent in the room. And for the nature of instruments, when I play more drum gigs, are more the, the things where it's sort of the more energetic things. And when I play the hung, it's more sort of concert atmosphere. But then there are also projects where combine it, like in Bjork, I'm playing both, or with my trio, Manu de Lago Handmaid, I'm playing hung and drums as well. And I just enjoy that variety. Uh, how is it working with Bjork on a regular basis? Um, well, it's, it's not the conventional touring thing with her. So it's we did in July. We played in Manchester for one month. We always did two shows a week. So it's one stage that keeps being set up, and then we just play two shows a week. And we did that for a month. And now we're doing that in Iceland at the moment for one month, doing nine shows in total. And then we'll move on to other cities, which will be confirmed soon. But that's sort of the plan over the next time to move from city to city and stay there for a month, which is really great because you get to hang out in the city, also leave your setup, you know, just set it up once and then it doesn't get touched, which is just really nice, not flying around every day. So I really enjoy the, the way of touring and working with her. Uh, is it a, a creative collaboration or is it more just, a, okay, Bjork wants this and then you do this? Um, well, on the album I only did one song with her, which is called Virus, and for that it was a very creative collaboration because we send back and forth a lot of material and um, she, she likes being offered a lot of stuff and, and that's great for me because I sort of could make the, the song, the hung part especially in my own, offer it to her then I would get some feedback and then I offer it again and so it's sort of a doing an arrangement together which is a very creative process. Um, and life it's also great, I had a lot of space when we arranged the, the, the live material for the tour so I just arranged my drum parts and the, uh, the, the silicone parts and the hand parts and then I, I would play it to her and then she tells me if she likes it or not and luckily she liked almost everything I did so it, it but could, could throw in my own, my own contribution to the project. You play it from the sun crystalline, just that really <laughs> break core-esque, which you don't yeah. normally actually see somebody doing live on drums, it's more of a, a yeah. electronic thing. I mean, well yeah, crystalline is quite a cool drum ending, like sort of a drum and bass thing, where the first time I heard it, I just couldn't believe that it really happened. It was like, that really, you know, it's sort of a pop song first, and then the ending is just mad. And um, yeah, it was like, um, I really wanted to play that, and then I sat together with a programmer for, for a week, and we just chopped up all the drum samples and put them, spread them out on the electronic drum kit. And I just try to make it playable and it's, it's really fun, especially when you get the big sound system behind you. And um, because we're playing in a round, so not front and front stage and audience there, so it's, it's, it's stage in the middle and audience around. But all the subwoofers are right behind me, so it, it's really great to actually play those beats and have a huge sound system behind you. So that's, it's good fun. Um, was that the most difficult part for you from the Biophilia project? Or what, or what would have been? If, if not that, then what? Um, in general, it's, it's quite a challenging pro, uh, like repertoire to play, especially the new album is, is, is very challenging. But, you know, it's, I just love playing challenging music where you, you don't sit there and, and just play a backbeat and switch off and just watch the girls in the audience. It's like literally challenging music where you have to totally be focused all the time. And, I'm not sure what's the most difficult one, you know, it's, um, um, it's, it's, it's also not easy just switching between all the instruments and one challenge is also just keeping in mind what the, what the sounds are, which pads, because it changes in every song and sometimes even within the song my setup changes, so I have to, to memorize quite a lot of samples, so it's, I wouldn't say it's technically really very challenging, but sort of the whole thing arrangement and the whole instrument section is sort of um, it's yeah it's that, that's sort of a challenge but a, a good challenge which i really enjoy doing <laughs>